to delivery. Notice it should not come out of there until we make contact. All right, we'll move to a uh, top hand, same type of drill. We're dealing with the top hand, quick toss. Again, the toss man's important. Positioning, delivery, trying to get that back elbow. We're doing a beautiful job of getting that back elbow right up into the slot. Now we slow it down. Notice this is what's really impressive about his action. Getting that into the power alley, keeping the hand in a position to release, and he's feeling that release. Flow load to release, bang. Flow load to release, bang. Very well done. Notice that in a toss man, in this drill and quick toss, it's important that he show the ball, that he get a good full arm swing, and the ball enter the zone with some velocity. We want the reaction time that he is providing my hitter to be game type velocity. About a half a second from release until the ball arrives. Hitter has a, the same type of responsibility, the same type of the pressure as he would have in handling a good 80, 85 mile an hour fastball. Don't lollipop it into the zone. In any drill that you're doing where you're watching the hitter work, particularly on your toss drills, it's extremely critical that you see his elbows stay flexed so that the power assembly works properly. And you see the elbows do it, follow a technique called flexion to extension. As he moves to the ball, you're going to see the flexion here and here. And as he releases the bat, that is flexion to extension, term that you can use to describe exactly what happens. And it happens late. It delivers the lag to the ball. Now, again, as we're looking at him finish out here, we're talking about another term, and this is the quick zone number three. Release this top hand, bottom hand releases, and reaches down and he touches his lead knee. Now, notice the distance between the lead shoulder and the lead knee is the number three quick zone. Now, we've had three so far, distance between the knees, distance between the elbows, and now, critical, from here to here, that is a quick zone, and it's a very critical quick zone is going to display all kinds of problems, flares. It's an indicator as to what's happened back in the swing. It is the effect of mistakes or good policy, good mechanics as you've come to the stroke area. Now we'll add a couple of implements that you can work with drills. First of all, a tennis racket situation, either with the gut or without the gut. And he can use either uh, top hand or lead arm in a quick toss and we're using the same type of delivery. We use tennis balls. You can use them in restricted spaces. Use restricted flight balls. Using the same thing, top hand, getting a back elbow in the alley, lead arm, flexion to extension. Notice that you now have a face to keep square. The tennis racket actually will help him teach it. You can use it with any type of racket source or you can take the gut out of it and just let the ball pass through there on the delivery. But they're great for indoor drills. Nobody's going to get hurt. You can get thousands of repetitions. And or you can bring the drill up a little bit with what is called a swing net. These are getting very difficult to find. I think uh, Kenny Myers, an old Dodger scout, put these together many years ago. And now you can actually swing this into a position. We'll use both hands on this. Swing this into position. Again, it has the same idea. We're trying to bring the face of the club head into a position where it's open. These are just as good as far as I'm concerned with or without the net because so many hitters, when they separate, they'll lay it down. When they have tension in their hands and muscle, club head throw away, that club head will come through and lay down. They'll be amazed with any type of racket how often they do not get square because they don't have proper back elbow position. And once you know the fundamentals, you can find any kind of implement to teach the drill, whether it be a swing net, a tennis racket, or whatever the case may be. Now we've got to a point where we understand how the lever assembly is put together, how to deliver it, why it's delivered directly to the ball. All we have left is can we release the barrel and make contact to drive the baseball? As we get to uh, the fourth section, the R in the star system is release. How do we release that bat? How do we teach people how to release it? Uh, Coach Whistler has set up, we want them to feel, this is called a centrifugal donut drill. We just put a donut, rather large donut on the top hand, and as he swings the bat into the contact area, you notice that the donut will begin to release its way down the barrel showing energy flow. Again, we've got it from the power base all the way up through the back knee trigger, through the lever assembly, and out through those power collectors and power points, and you'll see it finish down the barrel of the bat. It's a display or a demonstration of exactly how the power moves through the hitting sequence. As we remove the donut, notice also with that bat that he has a nail in the handle, 
And the only thing we do for this, put it in this area, and we're trying to let the hitter understand what it means to let the bat travel. Rather than shove the bat through the zone as he comes out in here, I want him to release it and let the nail come right back and point itself back toward home plate or as a finish. You'll find that some of the very best hitters have a quick bat. It travels through the zone. The nail in the handle allows you to see exactly how long it takes you to deliver the bat and bring the nail right back to the point. Trying to feel the wrist work rather than push. Try to feel the bat travel rather than be shoved through the zone. Another way of feeling that is to give him a golf trainer. The golf trainer is a short stick, short club that has an awful lot of weight. The weight itself forces the hands to finish very similar to the nail on the handle drill. You will feel it. Those are very economical. You can find them in almost any supply store or shop. It probably has the best natural feel of how the hands are supposed to stay relaxed and how the bat's supposed to travel through the zone if anything we can give him. One final action is that you can take any old axe handle and you notice it already has a little staple in the end and it's also oval. So that it makes those knuckles align in the mid knuckles of each hand. It drops the elbows down naturally and it is a lighter weight object, much like a fungo bat. So it makes him feel quick and I want that staple to come right back and show as soon as possible. Shorten the stroke, let the staple come right back to the zone. All right, very good. Now we've got uh, Coach Boer showing his best side. We've got him with his backside to you. We want to show you what it means to finish the legs, another technique. Once we've triggered in gear two, that's fine, but we've got to find a way to keep those legs accelerating as we release the bat. They are part of bat release. When we release the bat, it is all not up just here. It is also the legs must work, particularly on a ball in. Now, we want him to be able to feel that, and as well, we'll go back and pick up a couple of points from the start with him. Again, from here, we can see a drill called automatic slot release. I would like for him to have his back elbow working, and as he takes a swing, he can actually feel that back elbow touch his rib cage or his kidney area right in there. You can take 100 dry swings every day in automatic slot, power alley, in the power slot or power alley, and make sure the back elbow is brushing you or bumping you as you go past your pocket right in this area here. Along with that, you can feel that action and the back knee work simultaneously in what we call a power package. Now, to help him feel his legs more, we're going to load him on his front foot. Strictly all of his weight's loaded forward now, and we have no pressure on his backside. What we do this for sometimes is now as he takes a swinging action, as he moves and swings, he will feel this back leg release come off the ground as he concludes the stride. We find that in many great hitters, they actually lift that back foot off the ground as they finish. It doesn't have to stay anchored. It doesn't have to always be there. Now the best drill, an outstanding drill, is take the bat away from him, bring baseballs into the picture, and he's going to take a baseball, and he's going to toss it underhanded, down from the bottom, underhanded, out front. Now let's notice how his legs work. Notice as he tosses balls underhanded that the back leg releases. If he's going to be able to toss the ball completely, it's much like a first baseman throw on coverage at first base. This is what we call finish the legs. Obviously, if the ball is away from the guy in the strike zone, he'll release the back leg more so than he will if he has to turn and toss the ball. Now we're going to toss this ball down the third baseline. It's away from him. He's got to release the leg to get it there. And we're going to toss the next couple of balls down the first baseline. As he has to turn more to toss, you'll notice that he stays in a more of a shorter angle, shorter arc, and maybe stays on the ground a little longer. But still it's free. It's not anchored. Finishing the legs is very important. Now again with the same drill, throwing it straight away, we have what we call kick the bat through. We want the guy to actually feel like his back leg is making the toss or his back leg is swinging the bat. We're going to kick the ball through in an area. It's going to be, we want the feeling of being a little bit explosive with that type of activity in order that most hitters do not understand how to get the back foot off the ground at all. But now he's saying, I'm trying to throw this ball hard. Bang! 